Good morning, Algebra 1, period 1, 6, and 7. This is Mays coming at you from room 308. It's Tuesday, the 26th of May. We have four academic days plus a semester's final week. So we are rapidly running out of time, all right? So uh, a little administrivia right off the bat here. Uh, chapter 8 is closed. Don't bother turning anything else in from Chapter 8, okay? Um, I give you guys plenty of slack on that one, so if I get stuff from Chapter 8, I'm just going to disregard it. So focus on Chapter 9 and 10. So with that said, you will notice that Chapter 10, I assigned a ton of odd problems. All of those you can check, all right? Because I'm getting pretty sick of doing notes out there and having a lot of you just copy the answers down. So you're on your own for the last two sections in Chapter 10. However, I will support you with some video so I picked some problems out of section 10.3, and they look like this. I did one of each one of the sets, and they're really not that complicated, so I don't feel too bad about that. So here you go. All right, Algebra 1, Chapter 10, Section 10.3. This is number 7 out of 10.3. You start off with uh, the square root of C plus 12 is equal to 23. Now see that next step and see the next step? How do you think I got there? I subtracted 12 from both sides and now I got the square root of C is equal to 11. Now how do you suppose I got to that step? That I put the little box around because that's the answer. What do you think I did? Then remember, that's the square root of C is equal to 11. If you square both sides, the square root of C times the square root of C is C. Remember, that little square root symbol, that C to the one half power. Rules of exponents, if you square it, you multiply the exponents, 1 half times 2 is 1. So now you have c to the 1 power is equal to 121. Okay, so c is equal to 121. Square both sides. Okay, number 11. Now the whole trick to these problems is you've got to get the radical by itself. Notice in number 7, once we got it to this point here, all we do was square both sides, and we had an answer. Same drill over here on number 11. The 18's got to go, add 18 to both sides. And then the three, that's three times the square root of y. So I'm gonna divide by three. Now I have the square root of y is equal to five. Now once again, you square both sides. The square root of y squared is y. And five squared is 25, okay? All right, here's number 19. Not bad, looks a little scary, but not bad. Get rid of the seven, divide by three, and then square. Now notice you've got the square root of 3p minus 9 is equal to 6. When you square both sides, you get 3p minus 9 is equal to 36. Add 9, divide by 3, and p is equal to 15. Okay, that's why that stuff in section chapter 9, section 9.1 was so critically important. If you lost that, your ship is going down. All right, so please, if you need to review that, do so, please. All right, now number 39, this is, a little different. this is a cube. So this is the cube root, okay? So how do you get rid of a cube root? You cube both sides, all right? The cube root is something cubed, 8g. Six cubed, 216. Now divide by eight, and I had to do the arithmetic on that one, and g is equal to 27, okay? Number 51, now, 51 is a little different because it asks you to check your answers, and you're going to see why here in just a second. So 51, you start with the square root of 1 minus 3a is equal to 2a. Square both sides. Please don't forget to square everything. 2 squared is 4a squared is a squared. All right? Now, I'm going to set it equal to 0. 4a squared plus 3a minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, I chose to factor this one. You could have used the quadrat, but anyway, it factors quite nicely. Now set each individual factor equal to zero, and there's your two solutions to this. A is equal to a quarter, or A is equal to negative one. Now it says check your answers. Now look at that negative one right there. That's your huge clue right off the bat, okay? If you look at that negative one, if you multiply two times negative one, you get negative two. Well, the square root of anything is not going to work if you get a contradiction. So let's see what we get here, all right? So if you plug the negative one in there, okay, you get this. 
the square root of 1 plus 3, because remember, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive. Now, you have the square root of 4 is equal to negative 2. Now, I know that you know, it has a positive and a negative root, but it has to be true all the time. All right? So half the time, that fails. So negative 1 will not work. All right? Now, let's look at the 1 quarter part. 1 quarter. Hmm. Now, check. 1 minus 3 quarters, that's a quarter. The square root of quarter, remember, it's the square root of 1 over the square root of 4, just like that. So 1 half, all right? Now what's 2 times a quarter? 1 half. So that works, okay? So the quarter works, but the negative 1 does not work, okay? All right, so that's a little bit of section 10.3. I did a, a problem from each one of those for you, so you should be okay on those. All right, remember, the square, when you square the square root, you get it, okay? When you square the square root, you get that, all right? When you square the square root, okay? When you square the square root, don't forget to square the other side. All right? Same thing when you cube it. If you cube the cube root, okay? Whatever that little index is right there, do it to both sides. Okay, that's what I got for section 10.3. Uh, uh, hopefully that gets you moving a little bit. Remember, chapter eight is closed. I don't wanna see any more stuff out of chapter eight. You get to have plenty of time for that. That's like a month overdue, so bag it. Uh, chapter nine, and then the two sections in chapter 10. I'm gonna get your semester test posted. I'm gonna put some practice problems out for you. You already have some. I'll put some more out there for you. So you should be uh, no surprises on your semester test, and I'll try to get that posted up by Thursday, maybe Friday. I have until Monday to post it. And then you have until Wednesday of that following week to turn it in at noon, okay? If I don't have it Wednesday at noon, you ain't turning it in. No grade. All right, it's the 3rd of June. 3rd of June at 12 o'clock. I need to have your semester test back, okay? All right, well, that's what I kind of got for you today. So... Uh, Keep them cranking. Keep them cranking. Most of you are doing quite well. I'm pretty happy, and I got uh, opened my email today, and oh my goodness, I got a lot of assignments. So you guys had a very productive week, and I'm proud of you for getting all those done. Several of you have actually started to salvage your grades. Remember, if you have more than a 75 going into semester test, you're golden. If you have less than a 75 going into semester test, panic. You're going to need to do something on that semester test, all right? Okay. Um, Questions, comments, please feel free to email, ask questions. That's what we're here for. All right, that's all I got. Have a great day. May's out.